Hello, this is Jamie Cass again. It is now week 19 of the ENM 2020 course, and my time has come again. And this time I will be talking about Wallace with help from my friend Gonzalo. So now I will leave the video and start the presentation. This presentation is called Wallace Ecological Modeling Application Flexible and Reproducible Modeling of Species Niches and Distributions Built for Community Expansion. Below you can see a line of photos showing the main Wallace developers and contributors. This list of amazing people is growing every year, and we're thankful to have such a great team of very smart researchers putting their minds together to make the software better. I am Jamie Cass, and I am currently a postdoctoral scholar at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology Graduate University, where I work in Dr. Evan Economo's Biodiversity and Biocomplexity Unit. I mainly study the community variability and global richness of ants these days, but making the software Wallace with collaborators was part of my PhD while at Rob Anderson's lab at City College of New York. Gonzalo Pinilla Buitrago will be presenting after me, and he has taken the helm as the main developer of Wallace since I graduated. He is currently doing his PhD in Rob's lab. He'll be giving you a walkthrough by doing an example analysis, and will show you a sneak peek of the upcoming version 2. Very, very quick overview about species distribution models. You probably know them quite well already, but I figured I might as well go over them again. So species distribution models take species occurrences, these are coordinates in space, and uh, predictor variables, which could include time, climate, uh, topography, land cover, etc. They, they go into a model which can be any number of different models, regression-based machine learning. Um, and the model will make different kinds of predictions. Um, so these predictions can be environmental, uh, which is, takes the form of a response curve uh, as a, cer a certain variable goes up or down. Does the suitability for the species go up or down and how? And also geographic predictions, which are uh, patterns of suitability on a map. Uh, I'll be discussing presence-only models today um, because those are currently the ones that Wallace runs. So there have been some problems with existing workflows for making species distribution models. Um, the picture you see um, in front of you is uh, of the GUI of, for Maxent, the original Maxent software. Maxent is uh, one of the most popular SDM softwares out there uh, currently uh, too, and uh, it had some issues originally. So uh, the, most people ended up running Maxent with default settings because the setting controls were difficult to access and, and a little bit hidden. Uh, that made the, uh, the GUI a bit inflexible. Uh, uh, you could only run uh, things a certain way. And if you wanted to make any changes, it was, it was quite difficult. Um, required some searching. Uh, so this resulted in most people fitting models with default settings that ended up uh, uh, being overfit in many cases. It's better to explore uh, different uh, uh, groups of settings um, to, to find optimal models, and, and this was uh, pointed out a bit later. Um, it was also infrequently updated. It was controlled by a single person, Stephen Phillips, who is a very nice person, but a single person, and, and therefore there are many, many updates did not end up... Uh, 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 getting out uh, quickly. Uh, he tried his best, uh, but he is, is a single person. So that was an issue. Um, and it also required strings of different applications in order to complete a full analysis. You needed GIS software, you uh, uh, needed um, some kind of uh, uh, spreadsheet software um, to, to uh, manage the um, occurrence data, and uh, it, it outputs CSVs, so you had to open those in, in Microsoft Excel or something like that. And so it ended, ended up being uh, not very reproducible in the end because you had to be switching uh, back and forth between different softwares and, and cataloging what you're doing. Now, code is reproducible, as we know. However, um, it is more error prone than a GUI. You're not pointing and clicking, you're, you're typing things yourself. And so uh, there's a lot of human error in there. Um, uh, it has a steep learning curve. And it's also not easily generalizable. So when you get code to run species distribution models uh, from um, a paper supplemental information, uh, for example, it usually is tailored to that analysis and it's difficult to generalize it to your analysis. 
So there was a need in biodiversity informatics for software that, that, that um, achieves an appropriate balance between automation and supervision. And so uh, this software would automate repetitive aspects of this, this workflow. It also forced the user to make critical biological and conceptual decisions. Uh, so in other words, not blindly pointing and clicking. Um, and it would also be general with respect to the algorithms used. So uh, while I was um, in uh, Rob Anderson's lab doing my PhD, uh, we had an idea, which was to, to uh, run our code with GUI workflows to, to resolve this issue. So our idea was in the foreground, you would have some ex extensible, flexible, informative GUI, um, which is um, maybe a little more uh, um, uh, informative, flexible, and extensible than the existing Maxent GUI. And in the background, you would have R code running that would run um, analyses based on uh, brand new packages that were coming out. Because we realized that most of the uh, new analyses coming out were just were in code. Uh, they were not releasing GUIs for them. And so in order to use them, you needed to be a programmer. And if you were not very good at programming, you couldn't really access them. So that was an issue. Uh, two uh, of these R packages that are fairly recent, though not so much anymore, um, are spthin and enm eval. So spthin was a, an R package released by um, uh, Rob's lab and collaborators, um, led by uh, Matt Lamins, to uh, spatially thin occurrence data uh, to, to reduce um, spatial bias and, and spatial autocorrelation. Um, and ENM eval was also released by uh, Rob's lab and collaborators led by uh, Bob Muscarella. And this was a uh, package for tuning SDMs, uh, species distribution models, uh, to find optimal settings uh, for, to um, uh, uh, avoid overfitting models and find good settings for, for penalizing model complexity in an appropriate way for, for your data. And so uh, if you were not a programmer, you couldn't really access these tools uh, and other tools. And uh, we wanted to, to build something that, that would make these, these tools and others more accessible. So back in 2015, Rob Anderson, a couple of collaborators, and I decided to apply to the Ebe Nielsen Challenge led by GBIF, which uh, the theme for that year was um, innovative use of GBIF occurrence data. And we made the first version of Wallace. And we ended up getting to the finalist stage, which was encouragement for us in our quest to do this. So the idea behind the first implementation of Wallace was to feature code-based methods with a GUI. And we used an R package called Shiny, which made uh, allows users to make um, interactive web applications. And because it's an R, it's easy to integrate all the other R tools you wanted to, to put in as well. And then we had our product, which was Wallace. And here is an uh, image of um, the interface of uh, the first version of Wallace um, with some labels from the paper we published. So uh, what is Wallace and why? Wallace essentially is a point and click GUI application uh, that features a NIST distribution modeling workflow, but it is so much more. So here is a blown up image of the interface, and you can see the paper we published below along with the uh, authors and their pictures to the right. Uh, most of the, these authors uh, helped in the development of the first um, implementation of Wallace that went to the Ebby Nielsen challenge. We identified in the paper six qualities that we think make Wallace special. And so I'm going to talk about each one. The first is that Wallace's code is free and open. Uh, this means that, it, it, first of all, it costs no money, which most software these days in ecology does not. Um, however, a lot of other qualities make it open, uh, one of which is uh, it allows um, downloads from different open databases. Uh, it also has uh, lots of uh, metadata options. Um, in, 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 that are increasing in, in version two, and Gonzalo will talk about that. Um, but but essentially, the, the the philosophy of Wallace is that all of the code is um, open uh, uh, for use and also for modification. 
So uh, uh, I'll talk about this a bit later, but, but our hope is that people modify Wallace and, and make their own versions as they see fit. Wallace also provides guidance. We thought that this was very important. Uh, with a lot of GUIs, um, the user points and clicks through the analysis and, and doesn't really learn much about, about what's going on. And so if you're an expert, you, you have a good understanding of what's happening. Uh, but if using it for the first time, you might want to be informed about different aspects of the analysis. And so we made sure to add guidance text that addresses conceptual and methodological issues and provide references to the literature. Wallace is also flexible. It provides multiple analysis options and allows user inputs and downloads at most um, stages. And so um, one of the main problems with the, the Maxent GUI, for example, um, is that it was inflexible, it was difficult to make modifications and to try different um, kinds, different uh, 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 ways to do the analysis. And so we made sure with Wallace that that you could explore different uh, analysis workflows and compare them. Wallace is also interactive. It has uh, maps, tables, and graphs uh, that you can use to explore data, the models, um, and their model predictions as well. Here's an example on the, on the right side of uh, someone drawing a um, polygon uh, to select points. So there, there's basic GIS functionality in Wallace and uh, Gonzalo will, will demonstrate that afterwards. Uh, importantly, Wallace is reproducible. So after the analysis is done, you can download a R markdown file, which is an uh, executable um, uh, script that documents and uh, the analysis and allows you to rerun it. So it has text that, that walks you through the analysis, but also code that allows you to reproduce it. Wallace is also expandable. So um, I'll talk about this in a bit, but uh, uh, Wallace allows you to um, contribute uh, modules which, which act as uh, different kinds of methodological options. So if, if people want to, to add to Wallace, there is a vehicle uh, to do that um, to increase Wallace's functionality. So um, Gonzalo will cover this as well, but I wanted to go over this really quick. Um, installing Wallace is quite easy. You really need to just install and uh, install R and optionally R Studio. I recommend R Studio. Uh, for the Maxent Java software, you need to install the software itself. The link is below at the uh, American Museum of Natural History website, where it is now located. You need to make sure to install the appropriate Java version for your system, uh, whether it's 32 or 64 bit. Um, it's best to get rid of what's uh, in your system currently and install the newest version, um, and also the JDK. And then place the maxent.jar in the Dismo folder. Uh, if you if you do question mark maxent in R, it, um, the the help file for the maxent function will show you. Um, code that will uh, print out the path that you need to go to to find this Dismo folder. Uh, you need to place the maxcent.jar uh, uh, file there. Um, in future versions, I think we're going to include it because maxcent is now open source, but this uh, comes from a time when it was proprietary, so you needed to do it yourself. And then you install the Wallace package from CRAN. It's very easy. You just uh, do the code on the right, and there's a single function in the package. It is run Wallace, and when you do that, Wallace pops up and then you just use it. Uh, there is troubleshooting on the GitHub page, and the link is below. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what components and modules mean in Wallace. Uh, components are in row A, and these are basically steps of the analysis. Uh, for now, they are more or less sequential. In the future, they might become more like a web shape. Uh, but for the time being, uh, uh, they proceed in a line. And so Wallace uh, basically walks you through the analysis from beginning to end. Um, and you can choose where to end as well. Uh, row B shows you the upload and download options. Uh, those have increased in version 2, and Gonzalo will talk about that. Row C shows the packages used for each one. And we make sure to feature these packages because we rely on them to provide the functionality uh, and also to highlight author contributions. And then D shows the modules. 
So the modules are the options for each of the components. So for each component, um, there are different ways to proceed. Uh, for example, uh, obtain occurrence data in component one. Uh, you have two options. You can query an open source database like GBIF or, um, or uh, uh, something like BN for, for plant data in the new version of Wallace. Um, or you could supply your own user data. So if you have a CSV uh, file of occurrence data, you can upload it to Wallace. So there are different options. Another example is the model step in number six. You could make models of BioClim and Maxent. Uh, there will be uh, more uh, modeling options in the future, um, and so on and so forth. And uh, after project model, which is the, the currently the last component, you have the session code component which allows you to download the R markdown file, which I just described, or um, uh, in, in, in uh, R markdown form, or you can download a PDF, HTML, or Microsoft Word version of it as well. And this is for documentation, for sharing with collaborators, for adding to supplemental information, etc. And now I wanted to talk about some current and future directions for Wallace. So we are currently working on developing Wallace version two, we think it'll be ready by the summer of 2020, this year. Uh, from 2017 to 2019, researchers from around the world from different labs uh, visited uh, City College of New York to help to add new modules and increase Wallace's functionality. We are the firm belief that uh, one particular lab does not have all the answers, and so we wanted to reach out to other labs who had other methods uh, relating to species distribution modeling to add to Wallace to um, increase the plurality of the analyses available. Uh, we also got uh, much user feedback. We uh, did multiple workshops at different conferences. We have an official Wallace email uh, and Google group, which I'll give uh, later. Uh, and, and this user feedback substantially guided the development of uh, Wallace version two. So uh, we'd like to thank the users for that. Uh, so Wallace version 2 has more analysis features, uh, more metadata, uh, more of everything that version 1 had, and uh, Gonzalo will talk about those features in the sneak preview. So we've also been working with uh, collaborators at the American Museum of Natural History's Center for Biodiversity and Conservation on a uh, NASA grant uh, to produce two new R packages that further increase Wallace's functionality in two different directions. Uh, the first new R package will make reproducible workflows for integrating expert information into species range estimates. And the other one will uh, perform calculation of biodiversity change indicators using uh, the products of SDMs and also remote sensing data. So in essence, we're very excited to include these new tools into Wallace so that it's able to produce different kinds of new applied products. We're also working with a group called the Humboldt Institute in Colombia, who produced a web app called Biomodelos, which is a collaborative web platform for mapping species ranges that has experts register in order to make edits to uh, potential distributions. And so we are uh, working to integrate Wallace functionality into Biomodelos and vice versa, so that they can talk to each other and trade information. That's also a really exciting a new direction for Wallace. And now we will have a live demonstration of Wallace and a sneak preview of Wallace version 2, courtesy of Gonzalo. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Pinilla. I am a PhD student in the Anderson Lab of the City College of New York, and I am also one of the main developers of Wallace. For today, I will uh, first give you a virtual walkthrough of how to use Wallace, and then I will show you a very brief preview of what's coming for the next version. So this is the version that we are using today, Wallace version 1062. But keep in mind that we also have additional information on how to use Wallace in our website, wallacecomod.github.io. For example, you will uh, find a detailed information on how to use Wallace in a vignette, or uh, also the links to another webinars in Spanish, English, and some of them have uh, subtitles in Vietnamese. 
So what? Well, to install and use Wallace, uh, first you need to install R and Option R Studio. We recommend also this option. Additionally, if you want to use uh, the Max and Java version inside of Wallace, uh, you need to download this file and also place it in a specific uh, folder in your machine. So yeah, see if you need a additional information on how to do that, please visit our GitHub website. Okay, so once you open our studio, you just need to type three lines of code. The first one is uh, to install a uh, was in your machine. If you're doing this the first time, it will take several minutes until you sell all Wallace dependencies. Once a Wallace is installed, you need to load the package, type in library Wallace, and then you just need to type run Wallace. And that's it. This will open Wallace in your default browser. Once uh, you open Wallace, uh, you will land the Inter tab. In this one, you will find information about what is Wallace, uh, the users that we expect uh, to use the software, the attribute of Wallace, and also useful things of, uh, that will uh, give you information about how to use Wallace, how to contribute uh, on Wallace. It's a very important link to our GitHub website and the Google group. If you have suggestions, you find box, please report all these in whatever is these two options. And also you will find the email account where you can contact us also. And additionally, you will find the workflow, the workflow of all the components that we will follow in, in this uh, demonstration. Before we start with the analysis, I will show you the wallet interface. In the upper side, uh, each of the tabs represent uh, each of the components inside of the wallet workflow. In the left side is the plane where you will control uh, wallets. In this case, uh, you can pick up the module available and also give the input required for each of the modules. Keep in mind that here we also display the information of the package that we are using internally of, on Wallace. In the right side is where you will get partially uh, the results information obtained for each of the modes, but also you will find information about the guidance of, of, of Wallace. For example, if you have questions about what is going on in a particular component or a particular model, you will get this information here. Okay, so well, for our analysis, we will use information about the spectacle bear, that is a bear that is found in South America. So the first thing that we need to do is get the data, the current data. Yes. So uh, this component, uh, we will use a query database model, and uh, we will get this information from the GBIV database. Once you pick up the module, you pick up and uh, use the database, you just need to type the scientific name of your species and set the maximum number of occurrences that you want. I will use 1000. In this side, you will get a progress bar that is telling you that Wallace is getting this information uh, from the GBF database. And you can visualize um, this information and these results in a map where you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, there is some problems, at least with these occurrences, that is very clear that is outside of the range of the of the bear. We will deal with that in a minute. Also, you can see uh, the current information uh, in a table uh, where you will get information about the longitude, the longitude, the latitude, and other valuable information that within that uh, the user uh, can decide if if the occurrence is well or not. Additionally, in the log window, you will get information about the, yes, the parameters that you define uh, in, the, in the module uh, section. For example, 
we just define that we just want a 1000 of points but there is a total of uh, more than 2700 points internally while as removing uh, occurrences without coordinates um, also duplicates coordinates and at the end it's also telling you that a uh, yes just six, almost 700 points are available for the next steps of our analysis if you want also to see the original uh, GVF database and sorry the original GVF table you can download this table uh, just pushing the download button in where you will obtain uh, a CSV with all this information. Okay, so once we store our data in a map, it's very clear that there is problems with some of the occurrences. So the second step on Wallace is to process this occurrence data. So there is a three modules in where we can clean our data. The first of them is to draw a polygon in where select the points that we are sure or more close to the native uh, range of the species. To do that, we just need to pick up uh, this polygon over here in the map and then just based on clicks, draw the polygon and all the occurrences that are inside of this um, of the polygon will be selected. Once you finish your polygon, you need to push the select button and that's it. The occurrence that were that was in the US uh, is gone and you do have the information, uh, this information inside of the polygon. Uh, you need to delete this polygon but then you also see that yes, knowing this species that is found in the in the South American Andes, in the Andes, in this particular one, I know that this species is not found in the Pacific Ocean. So I also can delete this information based on the current ID in the second module available for this component. You just need to type the, uh, the ID. You can get this information for the table, but you also Sorry, as I here, you will find a, a field that is giving you this information, but you also can pick and select a, each of the occurrences and you will get all the fields a, that are displayed in the table. You will get all this information here, also in map. And over here, we see that the occurrence ID for this particular point is this number. You just need to type this number, enter, this record ID and this point will be gone. Okay, so the next step is to reduce the spatial correlation in our points. If you go in, uh, if you go and do a zooming of the points, it's very clear that some of them are clustered. So this particular spatial correlation can bias uh, our final model, so we need to deal with that. Uh, to do that, that uh, we just uh, doing we, we just will do a spatial thinning, in where all the points that are uh, that with the distance less of specifying uh, specify here in the distance, we will remove it of our analysis. This particular uh, case will be more clear once this analysis. Is on. Okay, so here you will see that uh, the occurrences on blue were removed uh, for for our analysis, and the ones in red are retained uh, for future analysis in the in Wallace workflow. Also, if you want to see this. TNET a database of occurrences, you can also download it uh, as a CSV file. So well, now that we get our current data and we process uh, this, this data, it's time to get the other input information that we need to run our models. 
that is get the environmental uh, variables. So here we have two options available. It, it, we can know the working by clean uh, variables that are very popular, or we also can use uh, the user specify option in where you can specify whatever recipe that you have in your machine. Uh, for this example, we will use the working data with a resolution of 10 R minutes. And if you want, you also can specify the variables of these 19 by climatic variables that you want to use. But here we will use all of them. So once you select the minutes, you need again to press the button and it will download uh, the working data. It will take some minutes uh, to download the data. And once this data is available on Wallace, uh, you will see the yes the print of the R print of uh, this stack in the results uh, tab. Cool. So I, as I told tell you, over here we have the the results that the grid telling us that yes. The working data using a resolution of 10, a resolution of 10 uh, R minutes was downloaded. The next step of our analysis is to process the environmental data that we just uh, got in the, in the third uh, component. So to do that, uh, keep in mind that we will use Maxim. Maxim is a, a presence background algorithm. So this means that we need to include into our analysis the area that is accessible for our species. And we have two options uh, in this component. You can specify a CSV file uh, with coordinates of the polygon, or you can select uh, the pseudo region based on your occurrences. So in the first step is to shoot this background extent. So we need to uh, define the shape of this uh, extent and also a buffer uh, that we apply to, to this shape. So we have three options, the bounding box, the minimum convex polygon, or a point buffer that's run uh, each of the occurrences. For this analysis, we will use the minimum convex polygon. And in the second step, we need to sample the, the pixels uh, that are inside of the uh, shape. So to do that, we will just sample uh, 10,000 points uh, randomly. And as you can see, uh, yes, it just 57% uh, was sampling because yes, we are using a very coarse resolution. So this means that yes, there, there is no available 10,000 points. And this is the information that we will use uh, uh, in the in the model uh, building uh, component. Keep in mind that also you can download uh, this mask background extent, and there is uh, several options and several formats to to get this data. Okay, so the next uh, component is the partition of the current data. So uh, we are doing this because uh, we need to evaluate our data. And um, one way to do that is use a cross-validation analysis in where te technically we just split our current data in several groups. And we use one of these groups uh, to test our model and the remaining ones and the rest of the groups uh, to build our model. And we iterate this process uh, changing this group of testing. Uh, I know that uh, this could be a little bit complicated, so if you need more information, you can just check uh, the component and the model guidance text. So here we, we are offering or giving the option of do this analysis uh, based on a non spatial partition and a spatial partition. Uh, for example, we can use a random key fold in where uh, we just uh, specify the number of folds and these folds uh, will split the data into groups randomly and then you can uh, yes, uh, specify a uh, higher number of, of folds and again the data will be split at a base of the 
partition groups uh, that you defined or you also can uh, use a spatial partition uh, that again uh, the partition of the of these points will be based on the geography this particular one a uh, block uh, partition is useful uh, when you want a model uh, that have is accurate when you are transferring to another times or another areas. For example, uh, you can build in one of the groups that uh, that you are calibrating your model and building your model. It will use like these three groups, and then we will uh, we will uh, yes uh, explore and evaluate uh, the model using these these testing points. So yeah. Uh, we will use this one for the for our analysis. Okay, once we partition, we get the partition of of the data. Uh, we can move to model a uh, building, a component. So here uh, we will not use the backlink clean option. Uh, it is algorithm is one of the simplest one uh, to get an ecological edge model. Uh, you need more information about that. Uh, please go to the component guidance and model guidance. And um, for this particular uh, demonstration, we will use a uh, maxim. Yeah. Uh, when we are running this analysis, we are using in the background the package in Imbal. So this package allows you to uh, to deal with the problem of com complex complexity in your model with uh, different combinations of feature classes and a regularis regularization multipliers. I will not talk too much about this. Technically, I will not talk about this. But if you need uh, more information about the evaluation statistics that uh, that Wallace is displaying and showing you and also uh, a little bit more about uh, this algorithm and the package please uh, keep in mind and that uh, this information available in this uh, guidance uh, tabs so well uh, we'll use uh, these uh, two feature classes combination the linear and the linear and quadratic with a uh, regularization multipliers between one and two Again, once you define this, you just need to run uh, the model, and over here you will see that uh, Wallace is building a, a different combination of, of this model. Okay. So you will see two tables. Uh, this particular one, uh, the one that will uh, found uh, below, is the one that is giving you like the the real or oh, just yes, the statistics for each of the pins uh, that you defined uh, in the previous uh, component. So technically, each of the pins is like one fold that is used for testing, and the other ones to be using for training your model. And uh, the the table that uh, is above is the one that is giving you the average of these uh, metrics for each of the pins. So keep in mind that Walls is not telling you and choosing for you the best model. You, uh, as biologists, need to use this table to pick up the best model for your species. Yeah. Just skipping this uh, conversation and discussion of which is the best model and which metrics to use, I just will use uh, the highest uh, average AUC value to train uh, to, to, to pick up the model. In this particular case, the best model that we will use is the one uh, with a regular search multiplier of 2 and the three classes linear and quadratic. Yes. Additionally, you can see the lambdas of uh, this model. To select the model, you just need to go to the this current uh, model option and choose 
the model uh, that, that you want. And here you will see like, the latest values. Once you get the table, you also can download uh, this result table as a CSV file. But uh, maybe sometimes if you are using uh, several combinations of featuring classes and featuring classes and regularization multipliers, you can display these results uh, in graphics. So here in the module of uh, validation plots, you can select uh, each of the validation statistics and uh, you will get a graphic of what is the performance for uh, each of the combinations that you are using or you use it to select in the previous component. Additionally to that, you also can uh, see the response curve for each of the variables uh, to the to the suitability of of you on your map or the, or against the suitability values on your map. So here uh, you will see in uh, in this menu that you can select each of the variables that are yes uh, that are contributing uh, to to your model. Um, yes, you will see how this relation between the range of the variable are changing with the suitability values that you get. If you want more information about uh, the response curve, remember that you have the model guidance text to help. And one of the most important things uh, is to get our map. And finally, we will uh, get this map prediction. So here you need to select the module a uh, map map prediction. Here we will use a logistic output and you just need to plot a, this map. And here we, we see that yes, our model is doing a, yes, let's just say that it's doing a good job uh, because it's showing that uh, there is a high suitability in the Andes that is where we expect that uh, our respectable bear is found. Uh, you also can download this uh, raster if you want. And additionally, you can uh, trace call this map to get the map of a uh, predicted absent and presence. Uh, here, uh, we will use the most conservative, uh, that is a 10% to 20 present. And you will see that in blue is the areas in where is uh, predicted uh, the presence of the species. We know for next step and last step on our workflow, uh, we will project our model to a new extent. Keep in mind in this component, you also have available the option to project to a new time in where you can project uh, to the future using a uh, different uh, global circulation models. And also you can calculate the environmental similarity between uh, the area where you build your model and the new area in which you will project your model. If you need more information about this uh, module, please uh, uh, check uh, the model guidance text. So well, to project to a new extent is something, again, very easy. This depends on the particular question that you have uh, about the species. Uh, in this particular case, I just want to explore what happened with the predicted suitability in the north, er north area of Colombia and Venezuela. So first, you just need to drop a new polygon in this area or area of your interest, and then you just need to press the project button. And again, in this case, I select the most conservative uh, threshold to yes to obtain a binary map and we will see that yes there is some areas especially the the high uh, areas of the andes and here in the sierra nevada de santa marta in where it is predicted a uh, 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 yes the present this predicted the presence of the species in this particular case the bear the spectacle bear Again, if you want, you also can download this projected air raster if you want. Um, well, uh, these are all the steps uh, that uh, you can uh, run on Wallace. 
but there is a final step is the session code uh, component in where you can download a, a markdown file that it will have all the code to reproduce your analysis on R. Let's show you this file in a minute. In this particular file, you will find like these uh, blocks of code or chunks of code in where you just need to run uh, the each of the chunks and you will reproduce the same uh, steps that uh, they use uh, on Wallace. So this is helpful if you want to share uh, this file with other colleagues or maybe you can use this file uh, as a supplemental material for a paper that uh, you are submitting or uh, if you want to uh, modify some of the analysis or maybe you want to add more analysis uh, based on packages that are available on R, you can also modify this uh, a markdown file uh, to do that. Uh, well, I think that uh, with this I finish the, the demonstration of the current version of WAS. And now I will uh, give you a very brief uh, preview of what's coming for our nurse for the next version of Wallace, the Wallace version 2. So, well, this is a beta version of the upcoming version of Wallace, Wallace version 2. This version uh, has some small changes in the in the graphic user interface, and also uh, we are adding some new features requested for users. Uh, for example, in the process environmental component, uh, we will have a new component in where you can draw uh, the polygon uh, for your study region. Additionally, in the project component, we have a new module in where you can specify your user uh, rasters uh, to just to project in any time or extent that you want. One of the coolest uh, new features on Wallace is the option to run several species in one session. Here uh, you just need to type two species and uh, then uh, you will obtain uh, these two species on Wallace. Here is uh, some kind of message that is telling you that for each of the species that you request, uh, you are obtaining some data. And in this new menu, where you can select uh, the species that you want to display in map. Additionally, uh, there is a new option uh, to download data, plain data for the VN database. And you also can uh, get information of the citation of your database, the citation that, uh, of your query, uh, using uh, the Oxide package that is in development for uh, Hannah Owens, in where you don't need to give uh, your credentials in the GV portal to obtain a dissertation. For example, you will get the DOI of your query. Also, you will have the option to download a fossil data from the paleobiodb.org website that is using the paleobiodb package that was developed by Sarah Arella. For example, here, you need to specify the name of your species, select the maximum number of occurrences that you want, and you will get a, yes, fossil data on WAS. Also, we are using a, the range model metadata package led by Cory Mero to save uh, all the metadata of the steps that you are doing on Wallace. It will be available in the, in the last in the last component, the session code component, where you can download uh, your file and uh, you will get a CSV file with information of the data that you are using 
this which, which attributes this they have and also uh, the parameters and the decisions that you make in some of the points of yeah, in some of the components and modules that you are using on, on walls. Another uh, feature that will be available for this next, ver this next version is the option to save and load uh, your your session on WAS. For example, you can have a uh, yes information and the data for 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 your analysis or your analysis. In this particular case, you also can get information of the environmental raster and then for whatever reason that you one you can stop your 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 analysis. You can save this session. You can close Wallace, and then come back a, a few hours or well, some just come back whenever you want. And you see here, there's nothing loaded in the session of Wallace. And then you just need to select the file, load it on Wallace. And you will have the information again available to continue your analysis. Also, and finally, you also will uh, have a new component, the environmental space component. In this component, you can run analysis of principal component uh, analysis for the occurrences at the background for each of the species, and also you can compare these two species uh, in pairs. Also, you have the option to get the present density grids for each of the species that you are using. And finally, a metrics of a niche overlap between them. And so with that, we would like to thank you very much for listening. At the very top, you can see the official Wallace email. Uh, below, we have links to the Wallace Google group, the GitHub repository, where you can find all the code, the uh, official website, and also a link to the Anderson Lab. At the very bottom, you can see um, all the institutions and groups associated with our collaborators. Thank you very much again, and if you have any questions, uh, please do ask them, and we will try our best to respond.